that make sense? Okay. So here's a problem. Suppose you got a bunch of data and you're trying to fit a line, right? So my, I've got some model that says y is equal to some parameter c1x plus c2. And I'm given some set of data, x1, y1, x2, y2, da, 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 x, k, y, k. You know, if I've got more than two points, there's no reason that the data set should lie on the line, right? So how do you minimize the error in your, in your model? Plug it in, right? Plug in the data into the model, like y1 is c1, x1 plus c2. I'm just plugging in the data points. And then that gives us this system of equations, overdetermined system of equations y is equal to mv. This m is playing the role that a has in our previous work. This is going to be inconsistent, so to solve it, I just multiply both sides by m transpose to get the normal equations to minimize the error in the inconsistent equation. So solving m transpose m equal to, m transpose the, the data vector y times that equals m transpose m v, finding that v will, will find me the best fit curve. This is a generic template for lots of problems. Here's a, here's a problem with actual points. Right. So find the best fit line through 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 3. So basically I follow the template of the previous example, which is to plug in these points into the, into the equation. That gives me four equations in C1 and C2. And it's always plus C2, plus C2, plus C2, plus C2, plus C2 every time, which is why you get this 1, 1, 1, 1, because it's always just adding the second parameter. Nothing happens with the x value. This is the x value times C1, so like 0, 1, 2, 3. And the, this 2 goes there, this 1 goes there, this 4 goes there, this 3 goes there. <coughs> What? That always ends up that way with the columns and ones. For this model. Okay. So I mean generically speaking, you have some model where you have parameters that appear linearly. You plug in the data, you look at the equations that it gives you, rewrite it as a system of equations. The system will be inconsistent, then you solve the normal equations. It it depends on the model what the matrix like this looks like. I mean um, let me just be more specific for you. Actually, I think I can go on. I have more examples. I think that'll clear up your question. Um, so anyway, these are the normal equations. And um, 14, 6, 6, 4, 18, 10. Um, this times a vector equal to that. So I can multiply by the inverse. I can solve this by multiplication by 2 by 2 inverse, right? And there you go, 3 fifths, 8 fifths. Those are the constants which give you the line which is closest to these four points. So that's the best fit line. That's the thing you derive in like physics lab by drawing a picture and trying to find the thing which is, you know, You could have something a little bit more interesting, like you could have um, the best fit linear model of this, z equals to c1x plus c2y plus c3, right? So like a, a typical equation, <clears throat> let's just look at, think, think, think about, um, you know, plug in x1, y1, z1, right? That gives you z1 is equal to what? My model is C1x1 plus C2x2 plus C3, right? So this <clears throat> is why we get, <laughs> this is the equation, I mean, so the, the, the variables in the equation are the C1, C2, and C3. The coefficients are the x1. Oh, I can't do math. What was the, it's y, right? So I'm supposed to, supposed to plug in y1 there. Sorry. So when I plug in the data x1, y1, z1 into the model, z equals to c1x plus c2y plus c3, that gives me this equation from the first data point. When I rearrange that, 
well, I don't rearrange it. When I just look at that, that gives me the first equation in um, curses I've written the equation. The equation, the inconsistent equation I'm talking about is just this m. <coughs> oh, this is a typo. What should we call this? Maybe what should we call? Let's leave that z vector. I don't know what the eh, notation. Um, I called it v here last. We could let this be v. Yeah, let's let that be v. That should be v. That'll fix it. So we're you know this m v equals to um, z is inconsistent. This would tell me like the first this v is. C1, C2, C3. Yeah. It's really not complicated. All I'm saying is you plug in data points into a model that you're given. It gives you a system of linear equations. You write the system as a matrix vector problem. You take that problem, you multiply by the transpose of the coefficient matrix and solve that. That's least squares. That's all I'm saying. So like this one, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 0, 3, blah, blah, blah. These, these, these points gives us this matrix with respect to this model, like 0, 0, 1. The, so the 0, the 0 goes here. This 0 is from the third 0. This 3 will appear here because that's the z value. 1 and 2, and the 1 is everywhere because that doesn't depend on the data point. It's just always there in the model. It's always plus C3. But you work it out after a little bit of um, matrix work I don't want to show you. Multiply by the M transpose on both sides. It gives you the, the normal system. I can do row reduction on the normal system. And the reduced rational form gives me this, which tells me C1, C2, and C3 are this. And so this guy right here, Z equals to 89 over 293X plus 32 over 93Y plus 19 over 93, is the plane which is closest to the given set of five points. This would be harder to do with graph paper. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Now, there's nothing really special about linear models in the sense that as long as the model that you're looking at has model functions which appear um, in a linear way, it's still a linear least squares kind of problem. So if I have nonlinear functions, f1, f2, da, 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 fn, right, and they're, you know, you're taking some linear combination of those to form your, 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 your dependent, your models, then you can plug data into this. And when you plug data into this, you still get a system of equations in your coefficients, c1 through cn, which is linear. It doesn't matter if the F1 and the F2 are like sines and cosines even, whatever. The, the problem still gives you, when you plug in the data points, a linear equation between C1 and the data Y1. And so you can still look at it as an inconsistent system of equations, and you can still solve it with the normal, the normal equations. <clears throat> so here's, a, here's an example of this nonlinear idea. Suppose you want to find the best fit parabola through these five points. All right? So this time the model has the form y equals to c1x squared plus c2x plus c3. All right? So plugging in data points is a little bit more interesting this time. You know? Um, so I'm just, I, I'm just using the language I had introduced before this example, f1, f2, f3. I mean, my model functions are the x squared function, the x function, the 1 function. These are the monomials. Anyway, so plugging that in, I get 0, 1, 16, because 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, like this. Again, an inconsistent equation, five equations and three unknowns, inconsistent. No problem, though, because we can multiply by the transpose of the coefficient matrix and get a corresponding consistent system, the normal equations, like so. And then I do row reduction, as usual, in the earlier part of the course, right? Yeah. And that gives me these coefficients, which are approximately that. And so, to a good approximation, the best fit parabola is this guy. This 
a very general idea I'm telling you. You can, you know, fit. As long as you have a model function, uh, you know, a set of model functions which have, which appear linearly in the, in the sense that they're just, you know, some number times each model function that you're trying to find the number, is, you know. Oh, it depends on the problem, yeah, what the model is. I mean, here, you might be looking, I mean, here, this would be, for example, I give a word problem. I'm saying it's position and, um, what I say? It's position at different times, and we're thinking of it being on an unknown planet. So then we, we still believe Newton's laws hold, so we derive that the position is quadratic in time. And we can, you know, we can interpret the data to be, allowing us to calculate a good approximation to the acceleration due to gravity on the planet, okay. for example. Yeah. Could you use this method to uh, plot the best picture from any shape that is expressed when your functions are? I, I tend to think so. I mean, I'm not sure the precise limitations of this method. Um, I've seen problems in books where it's something like ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared equals to D, which is like the equation of a circle, kind of messed up circle or ellipse or something, and then it'll give you a set of points and then say, find the uh, conic section which is closest to that data. And the thing is, the A, the B, the C, the D, and the equation for the conic section still appear linearly, so when you plug in the data points, you still get a linear equation in A, B, C, D, so you can solve it with linearly squares. It's an interesting and important question, though. How do I know that minimizing the distance between a precise solution, like a circle that actually goes through all of the data points versus, you know, how do I know that minimizing the data equation is the same as actually minimizing the physical distance between the, the points in the circle? And what, in what way geometrically is the distance between the circle related to the, the distance between the data points? I haven't seen that addressed. It's just problems people assign. I assume that actually showing that would be a difficult problem. That would be a great question to ask Dr. Wang, and probably the sort of thing you might address in Math 352. Maybe, maybe. <coughs> you can even play games like this. Newton's law of cooling states that a temperature, you know, object is, what is it? It's proportional to the difference between the temperature of the object and room temperature, right? So, long story short, we get the, what, what, what model do we get? We get Try to remember. I should put my glasses back on. Um, I say the natural log of the temperature at time t minus 70 is the natural log of C naught minus. So I think, man, where's it? I can't find it in this sea of stuff. Here's the solution, right? This is the model function. C naught e to the minus kt plus 70. I guess I know the ambient temperature is 70 degrees for some reason in this problem. Um, but the point is C0 and K are parameters, right? These are not linearly appearing, right? At least, well, the C0 is, but the K is not. It's inside an exponential. But here's the thing. If you subtract 70 from the other side and you take the natural log of T minus 70, then you've got the natural log of this. So you trade your original problem for natural log of C0 minus KT. Now I've got a linear model. I need to figure out what this linear parameter is and what k is. Well, minus k. And so even though the problem is not manifestly linear, you can do something to it to make it linear. And then I can do least squares to this. Yeah, somebody walking on the roof again. Let's see here. People got nothing better to do. Let's see here. And so I do that and work it out. And so like the linear least squares this is kind of a twisted linear least squares things ends up being there's there's actually the solution to the stated problem. So I think uh, yeah, I'm just about out. That's about all I got for examples. Now I wanted <laughs> wanted to get further, guys. <laughs> so next time <laughs> I will talk about inner products. And what I will show you there is that inner products have pretty much all the same 
theoretical niceties that we found for the dot product, orthogonal complement, orthonormal bases, projections, orthogonal projections, the closest vector property, all of that still is there. So you can do things like define the distance between functions or matrices. And here's an example. So if you define the distance between fu inner product between functions like this, you can work out an orthonormal basis of functions. This orthonormal basis of functions, so these are not orthonormal, 1x, x squared is not orthonormal, but if you sort through this notion of orthonormal basis of functions, you produce this set of functions 1 over root 2, root 3 over 2x, root 8 over 45x squared minus 1 third. This set of functions is known as the genre polynomials. So that's where we're going, building these kinds of special functions. And I will show you eventually the meaning of this interesting picture. So anyway, I'll shut up. Have a good break, guys.